Evelyn is located in Paddington, which is an inner city suburb of Brisbane, fairly famous for character houses. It was one of those projects that you knew straight away had so much potential. When we first met Ian and Laura, they came to us with a vision for this house. For them, it was about their family. For them, it was about how they wanted to live. Myself and my business partner having children the same age, we understood straight away what they were trying to achieve out of this house. It was a little cottage. We like to think that 1911 cottage that was there was always Evelyn. She was just wrapped up, boarded off, and we just had to come in and throw the drapes aside, peel the edges back, get her up out of the ground and give her a new life. And the front door almost doesn't exist. It's more of a gate than it is anything else. And as you peel inside, you arrive underneath an olive tree on a lawn in an outdoor room. There's no celebration about a big grand entrance or a big void. The big void is the yard. It's the lungs and the heart of the entire house. So we deliberately downplay every other aspect around it. It nestles in and it understands what it is to live in a Queenslander. Nine days out of 10, you can live with the entire house open. Every circulation path, every room, every moment and every aspect of this house responds back to the lawn, the pool and the garden that it's nestled within. And that very act of going up two steps through an archway is what separates the private domains, which is the kids' bedrooms, the bathrooms and the master bedroom. Those rooms become less about the courtyard and more about this private sanctuary in the back. You simply have to pull one door away and you can physically touch the trees, the plants, see the butterflies flying past. In a nutshell, that's what this house tries to achieve. We live busy, hectic lives. We all work in intense jobs. We travel through the CBD and being so close to all that is hectic about inner city living. When you come through the front door and you shut it behind you, this house aspires to being one of retreat, of tranquility. Then we brought in some more obvious ways to explore that sense of green vista. In the bathrooms, for instance, where we've wrapped the entire bathrooms in that beautiful green terrazzo. So you really do feel like you're sinking down into the bath, immersing yourself in the garden. The original workers' cottage part of the house, which is directly behind me, was a testament to the era of building at the time. So in the interiors, we wanted to bring in that handcrafted nature of joinery work and timber work. That one continuous detail used consistently throughout the house gives it rhythm. Throughout the house, the lighting has been very deliberately chosen, particularly the lack of any lighting on the ceiling. The ceiling itself has a beautiful curved arch and we didn't want to destroy that. So we've fixed all our lighting to the side. We've made the most of both wall lighting and up and down lights. At nighttime, those wall lights cast a beautiful soft glow, which is a really nice contrast to the dappled light that runs across the floor during the day. One of the most important aspects was a desire to live all on one level. That's an interesting aspect in any inner city Brisbane brief. When you have a one in eight slope, one of the first things we did was lift the cottage back up. From the outside, you'll see a series of new gables, each one of those matching the existing gable roof of the cottage. Etched into that concrete arch are the old VJ boards, remnants of a bygone era. The ceilings mirror and mimic the cladding and the timber because we wanted all of the new to seamlessly transition into the old and vice versa. It's very much part of the storyline of that house. The arch is a really strong motif that we've used to delineate moving from one space to the next. As you come up the stairs, you are actually greeted by an arch in plan form, which is wrapped around the olive tree in the courtyard. And then as you step inside the house, we've used the arch again to break those zones throughout the house wanted to really continue that sense of serenity through limited material palette, but used and crafted with detail. This isn't a house of features. It's not a house of dominant color tones or materiality. It's very much a subtle, reduced palette. 
it brings that backyard into the centre. It's paramount. Without that yard being at the middle, the house doesn't function. And our architecture responds to that, creating rooms that are both indoor and outdoor. We have shutters without glass in them so that you open the shutters and they catch the breezes as they move down past the side of the house. We have windows that face predominantly south in the bedrooms and so in summer they're beautifully cool spaces but also have big fins on the north in winter to allow that winter sunlight directly in. You see that green garden from every aspect. So from the outdoor room, you spill out onto the grass. From the kitchen, you spill out onto the grass. From the lounge and the dining room, again, open those doors and the kids can be playing right outside. We are extremely fortunate as architects to be given the trust to design houses for people in spaces where families come together. So to spend time with Ian and Laura and have a much longer lasting friendship at the end of this project is rare, but it's the one thing that makes doing what we do so special. It's calm and it's reserved, intelligent and functional, but equally it says on a weekend, let's throw the doors open, there's a party at my house. That's Ian and Laura. Every time I walk back in, I smile, this house, is so very much them. <laughs>